Hello, this is Dr. James Camp at Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and these are my thoughts on characters, C strings, and object strings in C++. This is from uh, these slides with some modifications are, are based on the book starting out with C++ from Tony Gaddis. Okay, so what is a character? This is the basis for any kind of textual representation in C and C++. And unless otherwise specified, it's a, uh, a single 8-bit uh, sized value or byte size value representing one item in a 255 member character set. So for example, um, if we set the value of character my car to uh, single quote A, single quote, uh, the computer would store that as the hexadecimal de decimal value 61, which is a one byte value. Uh, if we set our character number one to single quote one single quote, okay, um, the computer would store that as the one byte value hexadecimal 31. Okay, note that when you specify a character in C++ or C, uh, you use a single quote in any C family language, Java, uh, C sharp, any of those. Um, you use single quote marks um, this is a character this is a string um, of length one okay and that's an important difference that uh, C++ tends to minimize but uh, C very much does not. Okay. Uh, when I talk about these uh, numbers being uh, part of a character set, uh, a, uh, a character is essentially a, uh, a one byte integer, unsigned integer. It's always positive. So the exam examples could run from 0 to 255. Uh, it turns out that, you know, among choices that they made in the ASCII standard that everything else is, is based on at this point is 32 for a space character, 33 for an exclamation point, 49 starts off the numerals at 1, actually 48 starts off the numerals at 0, uh, 65 gets us a capital A, and 97 gets us a lowercase a. So note that if you're comparing two letters and you have a lowercase and an uppercase version of the same thing, A, if you tested A equals A, uh, that would yield a false comparison value because they are not the same. Uh, they do not have the same numerical value underlying them. Uh, now, a couple of interesting trivia facts. The ASCII standard went as high as character 127. Beyond that, um, there were competing standards. Okay, For example, character 150 on a Mac was the Spanish Inye character, um, while on a US English IBM PC, um, the same 150 specified a U with a little hat on it, uh, which is used in other European languages. Uh, Apple and IBM also made some other interesting choices. Max gave mathematicians a range of special symbols such as mu, summation sign, pi, and integral sign. Uh, while in the same range of numbers, IBM specified line drawing characters that you could use to pretty up your terminal programs because at the time that Apple was developing this for the Mac, um, all of their, you know, the Mac, as, as you may know, never had um, terminal programs. Everything ran in a pretty uh, graphical user interface system. But at that time, uh, Windows was uh, barely a thing, if, if it was a thing. Um, most IBM customers ran programs in terminal mode uh, on uh, text-only screens. Uh, 
which made their hardware a lot cheaper. Uh, but uh, some of you may remember a day long, long ago when uh, you, you may have gone up to somebody running a business and their cash register program or the terminal screen that they were looking up your auto part on at the auto parts store or something um, just had a bunch of text on it. Um, no windows, no uh, graphical dialog boxes, no mouse and buttons to, to use. You just typed things in specific places and, and stuff happened. Um, and to make those things prettier, IBM specified a bunch of line drawing characters such as the two that are shown here um, that basically would form the upper corner of a window um, if you wanted to define, you know, boxes on your screen. Um, you could use these characters to draw boom, boom. Um, uh, you could draw things like boom, 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 boom. Okay, and if you wanted to have a double line at the top, you could do that, and that's what this would would uh, work with. Um, you wouldn't actually leave the spaces, the empty spaces in between there, like I did. That was just to show you that those are separate characters. Uh, you would, in reality, this would look like a solid double line running across the top of your screen. Okay. Um, eventually, ISO, the International Standards Organization, um, defined some standard extended ASCII ranges because it was becoming obvious that computers needed to exchange information between Unix computers and uh, IBM computers and Apple computers and such. Uh, ISO 8859 became a starting point for Unix and uh, Windows graphical character sets um, as, as Unix moved into the X Windows world and, and Windows replaced IBM's uh, text-based terminal screens. Uh, they didn't need those special drawing characters anymore so they could move into uh, more uh, special symbols like uh, characters from European languages and things like that. Um, Eventually, however, uh, the world realized that, that even ISO 8859 was not good enough because somebody in uh, Russia needed to be able to communicate with somebody in France and somebody in Greece needed to be able to communicate with somebody in Canada um, as, as the internet era uh, dawned on us. Um, and if you sent a document that had been written in the Greek version of the ISO 8859 standard to somebody in Canada and they opened it, it would look like a bunch of gobbledygook because their computer was trying to interpret it with the uh, Western European and American version of ISO 8859. Uh, so we came up with a character set called Unicode, which uh, still defines the first 127 characters the same way. Um, and then allows you to extend that up to 16-bit characters, um, two-byte characters, um, and even further than that if you need to, uh, to the point where the current Unicode standard can actually hold every character in use in any language in the world, including some dead languages that haven't been spoken in centuries, but that um, scholars need to be able to represent so that they can pull up an ancient Syrian document on their um, on their web browser or something. Um, so uh, Unicode is the new standard. Uh, Java is Unicode native. C Sharp is Unicode native. C and C plus have not caught up with that yet. You can represent a 16-bit character in C++ but it's not easy and it's not the native implementation. Okay, so let's look at some ways that you can work with characters in C++. Um, all of these are from a C character library called C type. In C++, we prepend an extra C to indicate that it's from standard C, so it's C C type, but 
this stands for character right there. So this is the C language character type library. Okay, if you were on uh, if you were programming in standard C, you, you would drop that initial C and you'd just say C type. Uh, character testing is something you might do if you're processing text. Um, if you want to know how long the first word that somebody typed was, you could step through one character at a time and call the isAlpha uh, function to find out if, if you're still looking at a letter. Uh, if you want to know how long a, a number is that you want to convert into actual numerical integer, you might keep walking through the string as long as is digit returns true. Okay. Um, for example, um, if somebody types in 144 inches at the command line, or at the, the console, and you want to convert that to a uh, number, uh, you'd need to copy just this first three into a new string and convert that. Uh, how do you find that out? Well, you could say uh, while you could set, uh, you can use pointers, um, you could say character star uh, index uh, equals, uh, let's say this got stored in a variable length, okay? So we set that to length, um, and then, um, or you could just create a, a index variable, int index equals zero, um, and, and look at length at index. But let's go back to the character star, because I like, we, we just covered uh, pointers, so that's kind of fun. Um, character star index uh, equals length. So we start at the beginning of length. Um, and then we say um, while is digit star index, get the character that we're pointing to, um, index plus plus, and that'll keep, that'll move index here, and then here, and then here, and then eventually index will find some text that isn't a number, and at that point, we can report um, index minus length, uh, we can store as a variable called, you know, we, we can use that many characters, That's that would give us three Okay, so anyway, there, there are some ways you can use these things to uh, process your strings. You can check if a particular character is lowercase or uppercase. You can check if it's a printable character before you send it to the screen. Um, the first 30 characters of the ASCII character set are what we call non-printing characters, NPCs. Um, they don't... Uh, don't have a printable value. In fact, one of them uh, is a beep character, and if you print it to your terminal, it will make a obnoxious beeping sound. Uh, so you don't want to uh, send those to C out by mistake. Uh, this shows the use of uh, the character test functions for sort of trivial uh, purposes uh, just to process some some input and tell the user about it. Uh, there are also functions that convert cases. Okay, to upper gives you the uppercase equivalent of a character. To lower gives you the lowercase equivalent of a character. Uh, this is useful when you want to compare 
two things. Um, also very useful if you're if you're running a menu function. Um, so uh, if you ask the user to uh, type in uh, for no, y for yes, uh, the person could obviously type either lowercase n or capital N. Okay, so if you say if to upper of input equals n, okay, you don't have to do two comparisons to check for lowercase n and uppercase n, okay. Um, you can also use this to compare whole strings um, if you process one character at a time. Okay, and that's where we're going next. So uh, C strings hearken from um, the bad old days when we didn't have object-oriented programming and so handling a string of text was not as simple as just assigning it an object that managed its memory for you. So a string in standard C is just a sequence of characters stored in adjacent memory locations, that is an array, um, terminated by the null character. Okay, that's character backslash zero. Okay, um, that is character zero in the ASCII uh, terminology or the, the ASCII uh, uh, system. And so if you were to represent a string literal on uh, the keyboard, if you were to say uh, my string equals hi there, okay, my string would point to the first character and uh, if you then said C out my string, uh, and it's a C string, C out will print one character at a time until it finds this uh, null character and interpret that as a stop sign. Okay, all of the C string handling uh, library functions are based around this idea of looking for a null terminator as the way to know when you've reached the end of a string. Uh, woe be to he who uh, writes his own string copy function and forgets to copy that terminating null character because then everything else you do is going to keep running. You know, if you forget this character, then C out is going to keep reading uh, into the gobbledygook that's that's there beyond your your string. Okay, so first, before we get into how C++ handles C strings, I want to talk about the bad old days, okay? Now, I say the old days, but C, according to some measures, is actually still more popular than C++, okay? It's definitely in the top 10 actively used programming languages, no matter what index you look at, but there are some indexes that actually put it as number two or number three, um, above C++. Um, so while what I'm about to say doesn't apply to the C++ that we're learning in this class, you may need to use this someday. Um, virtually everything we've learned in this class so far could work in C programming except for the C in, C out stuff. Okay, you use printf and scanf in C and I'm going to show you how to use that in just a second. Um, and uh, you can't use string objects in C. You have to use these C string arrays. So here's a sample C string program in old fashioned standard C. Um, you would need to do some pound includes. Um, standard IO.H gives you the printf and scanf. Um, the F, by the way, does not mean file, which is what I thought it did when I first 
learned, it means format. And that means it looks for these funny percent characters as, as formatting characters to tell it how to format the input or the output. Uh, you have to include ctype.h to get character type operators like the two upper that I use right here. Okay. And you have to import string.h to get the string manipulators like strlin and strcompare, string length and string compare. Okay, so let's look at this one line at a time real quick. Um, I set up a 32 character array. Um, So I'm not going to draw all 32 characters here, um, which is okay because C isn't going to use all 32 characters, but I need to set aside more memory than I'm going to use because unlike the C, the string object in C++, uh, C does not actively manage the memory of these strings. You have to make sure that you have more memory than you're going to use. So I set my name, to J A M E S and uh, C plus plus, I mean C, old fashioned C, adds that, that looks awful, backslash zero null terminator character for me automatically. Okay. Um, then I send a string literal to the printf function. Okay, which is going to print what is your name on the screen. Okay, I set up another 32 character thing called um, your name. Okay, so I set aside another series of memory boxes. And let's say your name is Suzanne. So you're going to type in uh, you're going to type at the keyboard S U Z A N N E. Okay. And scanf is the input function in old fashioned C. You tell it that it's looking for a percent S, a string, and you give it a variable to stuff that string into. Um, and so it's going to read what you write, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E. It's going to look for the first space in your input and turn that into, uh, and, and stop reading at that point. And then once again, it's going to put that special slash zero terminating character in there for me. Okay. Um, I'm going to then print, your name is, um, here's another one of these formatting characters. Okay. Percent D means decimal. So it's going to interpret whatever comes in as a base 10 integer. And the base 10 integer I'm going to give it is sterlin of your name. Okay, string length of your name. String length is going to start here and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, found a null terminator. So it's going to return 7 which is in fact the length of the name Suzanne. Okay, and that is gonna be inserted where this formatting character is so the thing will print, your name is seven letters long. Uh, note that there is no end line uh, function in standard C to produce a new line, so I have to put in my backslash in new line character uh, manually. Okay. Now, I want to compare that name and my name. I want to find out if the person I'm talking to has the same name as me. Uh, why? Because I'm vain. I don't know. Because um, it makes a good programming problem. Uh, so, I start int at i equals zero. So, that's pointing to the first uh, letter in your name. I run as long as I is less than string length of your name, which is seven. Okay. And I, I plus plus between each 
thing. So we're going to step one at a time through this. And then for each one, I take your name at I and I change it to upper your name at I. So it's going to leave the capital S at the start of Suzanne alone, but it's going to change this to a capital U, capital Z, capital A, capital N, N, E. Okay. Um, so I can use character level operations on my string if I walk through the string one item at a time. Then if string compare, okay, I can't just ask, is my name equal, does my name equal equal your name? I can't do that in C. So I have to use the string compare function. Um, if string compare my name, your name equals zero, zero means they have no differences, okay? It can return negative differences, meaning my name is less than your name in some numerical sense. It can return a positive number difference, meaning my name is greater than your name, or it can return zero, meaning they're exactly equal. If they're exactly equal, then I print F, your name is the same as mine, yay! Uh, I could also, of course, write an else here and put your name is less than my name or your name is greater than my name. I could do any sort of thing I wanted to with that. Okay. Um, how do C strings work in C++? Um, we would define an array of characters to define storage for the string. So um, if we assume that the name of the city we live in has no more than 19 characters, because remember we've got to leave room for that null at the end, um, then we could set city uh, set up character city of size 20 and then we could enter a value using you know we could initialize it with the equals quotes okay we can say city of size equals Houston okay um, we can enter a value using CN we can say CN city um, we can use cn.getLine um, to to read the entire line um, and put that output into the city okay um, don't know why I just erased that cn city works okay um so um note that input is white space terminated if you use this character so you're not going to read the whole line you're going to read until you find a, a space or a tab character um and there's not a check um in any of this stuff any of these c string routines none of them check to make sure that there's enough space in your array so if you read in um uh, I don't know, a city that has 21 characters in its name. I'm not coming up with one just at the moment, but uh, if you did, um, you would uh, you would overrun the size of your array and you'd corrupt the memory from some other part of your program. Uh, if you tried to read in Los Angeles, um, it would stop at the space between Los and Angeles. And so that's why cn.getLine might be a preferred way to do that. Okay, so um, cn.getLine works like this. You provide the string that you're trying to get and then the size that you're willing to read. Okay, and it will, um, it will read up to that many characters. Okay, um, there are some library functions that again are imported from the C language, okay? So this means C language, and this means uh, C string library, okay? If you were in standard C, you would just import string. You would pound include string.h, not C string. Uh, functions take one or more C strings as arguments. You can use 
um, the name of a C string array variable. You can use a pointer to a character, you know, a char star pointer. Okay, so you can use um, character my string size. Okay, um, you can use character star my string, but in this case, you have to be very careful to make sure that you have set aside enough memory for, um, you know, you can have a char star my string that points to nothing in particular that, that the operating system has not allocated any memory for um, because you didn't set it up with this uh, size thing. Um, so that's, uh, that's a potential problem. Um, and then um, you can use a literal string. You can pass in quotes my string to any of these C string functions anywhere that it expects a string except um, if there's an output string that it's using. Okay, strlin returns the length of the string. We've seen that already. Stir cat appends, you know, concatenates um, string one and string two. So it adds string two to the end of string one. Uh, so if you had, uh, if your location was Missoula, okay, you've now set aside enough memory to hold M I S S O U L A slash zero. Okay, but there are extra spaces in your array. You can stir cat location and state, which will add, it will remove that slash zero, add comma, space, M, can't write an M. Okay, comma, space, MT, and then it'll move the terminating slash zero there. Okay, so the location now reads as Missoula, Montana. Okay, stir copy um, copies string two to string one. So if we set up um, F name to hold M A U R E E N slash zero. Okay. And then we create an empty variable of the same size called name. Then if we call stir copy, it will just copy each one of these letters over until it finds the null terminator, copy the null terminator, and then stop. Um, what happens if name is shorter than F name? Um, exactly what you would expect. We will start overwriting other memory that might belong to some other part of your program, and that's going to corrupt your program. So once again, no bounds checking. Okay. Um, there are some functions that the C library, the C standard library provides. Um, again, C means that this comes from the C language, and this means standard library. Okay, if you were writing a C program, you'd just import stdlib.h, not C standard lib. Okay. Um, a to I, A means alpha, an, an alphabetic string. Um, so A to I converts a string to an integer. A to L converts a string to a long. A to F converts a string to a, uh, a float, but it's now a double. They've, they've promoted it to a double. Um, I to A goes backwards, takes an integer and converts it to text and it allows you to tell it what base you're converting in. 
So um, I to A inum int car base eight takes inum, which is one, two, three, four, and converts it to base eight, which is two, three, two, two. So if you ever want to know the base eight or the base 16 or something of one of your numbers, you can always do that. Um, note some problems. If the C string contains non-digits, the results are undefined. There's no error checking built into these. So they, they make you do the checking ahead of time that the user entered uh, digits only. That's where that is car or is digit um, that we looked at at the very beginning of this presentation comes in handy. Um, the function may proceed up to the first non-digit and return what it's got so far, or it may see that there's non-digits in here and just return zero. Okay. Also, none of these do any bounds checking. They're going to read until they find a null terminator if, if they're doing the A2 whatevers. Um, I to A will keep writing until it's written out the entire number, whether it runs out of space in your uh, string or not. Um, since this is a C++ course, it would be irresponsible to not point out that there are also much better versions of these uh, conversion things that work with C++ object strings. Okay, these do have bounds checking in them um, and some amount of error checking. Um, um, and then there's the reverse of that. You can go to string and you can pass an int along um, a float, a double, um, even a long double, the biggest number we can conceive of in C++, um, and convert those to a string. Presumably these have some overloaded versions that allow you to pass a, uh, a parameter saying how you want to um, do this conversion. You'd have to look up the library reference in C++ for that. Okay, um, you may not want to trust the C string handling functions that are built into C, C string library because they don't have bounds checking. Um, you could do your own that um, perform bounds checking to ensure enough space for the results or to uh, anticipate unexpected input in handling a, a new number to string conversion, for example or a string to number conversion. Um, here's an example of a string copy function that, that they wrote. Um, you pass in a string array, you know, a character array and another character array, and it steps through string one, copying each character one at a time to string two, stops when the null character is encountered, um, and then places a null character in string two. Now, there is no bounds checking in this function, so I don't know how this is any better than the str copy that uh, comes with the C library, but they just wanted to show you that you could do it. Um, name slice, now here's something that isn't in the uh, C standard library. It uh, locates the first space and converts it to a null terminator so that um, you only have one word in your your name string at this point. It slices off anything after a space. Okay. Um, finally, let's talk about the C++ string object class. Um, it's a special data type that does not require null terminated arrays. It just um, handles strings as objects. Um, you can define them as, okay, they are standard colon, colon, string, um, first name or last name. Usually we use that using namespace standard so we don't have to write that, but do keep in mind that that is supposed to be there if you ever forget you're using namespace. Um, string is not a built-in type to the C language. It comes from the pound include string library. 
Uh, once you have created a string, you can give it a value with the assignment operator. Doesn't have, uh, unlike normal C strings, it doesn't have to happen in the um, assignment. Uh, it doesn't have to happen at initialization time. So with a normal C string, we had to write um, first name, size equals George. If we went and tried to do F name equals Martha later, that would not compute. We have to use a C string library routine like uh, S printf F name Martha. Okay, and that would replace F name with Martha. Okay. Um, and as you would expect, C string, I mean, C string objects can be fed directly to C out and it will print them exactly the way you expect them to be printed. Uh, you can use the uh, extraction operator to read an item into a string object. Uh, same caveats as uh, using it for C string, you know, C string arrays is that this extraction operator will stop anytime it hits a space or other white space, a tab, anything like that. Um, so you may do better using the get line function to read strings. Okay, and they're going to tell you how to do that here. Uh, you get line, cn, and the string. Okay. You can use relational operators directly to compare string objects, unlike um, C strings, where you have to use the stir comp, the, the string comparison operator. Here, you can just use a less than or an equals equals or a greater than or equal to or any of those operators. Okay, um, this sorts the names alphabetically by. Uh, If you enter two names, if name one is less than name two, it prints them in that order. If name one is greater than name two, it swaps the order of them. Okay. Um, here's some other ways to define C strings. Because they are string objects, they have uh, uh, initializer functions uh, called constructors that you can pass a string to in parentheses and initialize the string that way in addition to just setting string name equals Chris, okay? Um, if you do string name, it creates an empty string object, a string that has no characters, okay? The value of the string is null. Um, you can also ask it to copy only the first three characters of my name or only the first two characters starting at position three. You can even have it take a character and repeat it a certain number of times. Okay, um, string operators work about as you would expect. Um, one interesting thing is that instead of using strcat to concatenate, you can plus equals. So you can do um, name equals George name plus equals Washington and you get the full name. Um, this shows how you can use word plun plus word two to get hot dog 
um, you can plus equal on a bun. Okay. Um, this one shows a way to concatenate the first few letters of the alphabet. Okay. Um, there are also string member functions that more explicitly tell you exactly what you're doing to the string. Assign, copy, append, clear will set the string back to null. Um, empty, length, um, resize. Uh, you can get the front of the string, the back. You can get string at if you don't want to use the square bracket operator. You can get a substring of the string. Okay, all of these are aliased with other C++ operators, but if you want to just assign dog and then append word one, which is hot, okay, and then append word two, which is dog, then your, your phrase gets hot dog. You can append with mustard relish, but only count the first 13 characters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You'll say hot dog with mustard. Um, you can insert at a position. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on a bun, and we get hot dog on a bun with mustard. Okay. Um, this shows that you, instead of using sterling, sterlin, you just call the string dot length property and you get the length of the string. Okay. So that's the end of the fascinating world of strings. I've got one more, uh, uh, one more presentation on basic data in C and C++ um, on the, uh, the uh, struct type, which lets you create data structures with, uh, whereas arrays give you a lot of the same value, struct gives you several different values grouped into one data structure. Uh, we'll talk about that next and then uh, then we move into objects and we get to the plus plus part of C++ programming. All right, stay tuned, keep learning, and I'll see you around.